Have you been looking for the ultimate small distribution to squeeze that little bit extra out of that old PC you have laying around? Or maybe you're looking for the best up to date with all the greatest selection of packages of a distribution to run in a virtual environment on your machine. Well, I've always been a big fan of the Linux Mint distribution and now the Linux Mint Felicia Fluxbox Community Edition has hit the streets in release candidate form and it's time we take an in-depth look. Alright, before we get started, I'd like to take a moment and tell you about the lads over at GoDaddy.com. No? Okay. Well, while my accent might suck, GoDaddy services uh, do not. If you use my code LINUX, L-I-N-U-X, when you check out, you'll save 10% off any order. If you use the code LINUX20, that's L-I-N-U-X20, when you check out and you're getting hosting plans, you can save 20%, even on a three-year deal. It's pretty awesome, and I'm a big fan of their hosting as a personal user. Never had any problems, and it's always been nice and fast for me, and it's good. It's, I think it's fairly priced, too. Anyways, if you can use the, either one of those codes when you check out at GoDaddy.com, you help us out, and I really appreciate it. All right, so, moving on with the show. God, no. Moving on. Never mind. I'm just going to stop while I'm ahead. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Linux Mint 6, Felicia Fluxbox, CE, which stands for Community Edition, RC1. Okay, so that's a lot of stuff, but what is it? Well, first of all, let's talk about Linux Mint. Linux Mint is derived from Ubuntu, but it has a lot of the extra good sauce mixed in that I think makes a strong Linux desktop. Certain types of software are preloaded. Uh, themes have been replaced that make the Linux desktop look really nice. Uh, or I, I should say they replace the themes that make the Linux desktop look not so nice. I, I think they do a really good job with the uh, with the artwork in, in uh, Linux Mint, and I'm a big fan of that aspect of it. They also have made a good um, effort in replacing some utilities that uh, are not as easy to use and also in making software installation a lot easier on the Linux desktop. So that's Linux Mint in a nutshell. I, I realize that's a really high level overview but it's basically a great distribution and if if you're curious about um, Linux or you're familiar with Ubuntu but you want just a little more uh, Linux Mint is definitely something to check out. So okay how does uh, Felicia Fluxbox fit into this picture? They've basically tried to take that simple, elegant approach and extend it to the ultra-minimal Linux desktop. Sorry if audio was a little hot there. I, I made some tweaks to try to make the uh, to make the audio not uh, peek out too much. Okay, so let's talk about their ultra-minimal desktop. What's it include? And I'll explain what some of these things are if you don't already know. Uh, it's based on Zubuntu, which is Ubuntu's slimmed-down minimal desktop, it, which ships with the XFCE desktop. Zubuntu does. Um, it has the, uh, one of the latest Linux kernels out there. It includes something called Fluxbox, which is um, a little more, even more minimal than what Zubuntu ships with. Fluxbox is a very basic, gets you uh, essentially a window environment and has some basic menu abilities and, and, and the ability to to organize the windows on your desktop, but uh, it's not as flashy as maybe a full GNOME desktop or a full Windows or a Mac OS X desktop. It's, it's got... Um, on purpose some simplicity and less less features built in but they try to get those bare essentials that you need in order to run your desktop so that's that's Fluxbox it includes um, a all new menu system called um, Mint FM2 and I'm reading off my notes here as I read this which is essentially a, uh, a streamlined menu system that helps you find what you need a lot faster and when you're in Fluxbox there's the option to roll your own menu system or you can use the default window environment menu system which I personally think is very disorganized and very hard to follow. So I'm going to be very interested to see how Mint FM2's menu system, that's their menu, the Mint FM2 menu system, that's what the menu system is called. I'm curious to see how that works um, because that's going to be a, a huge part of it. Now here's the kick. Now like I mentioned, I think this is just great. This is called a minimal desktop Linux environment for a reason. Check out these minimum requirements. Okay, for one, you need an x86 processor. So, old PowerPC Mac users, you're out on this one. That's like two of you. Um, it needs 128 megabytes of RAM. 128 megabytes, I'm sure any system you have that still powers on 
well, I shouldn't say that, but I'm sure most of you, any system you have that still powers on, has at least 128 megabytes of memory. It needs two gigabytes of hard drive storage. Again, not too hard to come by. You can probably, I mean, you can you can get a $15 USB memory stick that, that has two gigabytes on it. Uh, you need to have a video card and something that could support 800 by 600, and you need a CD-ROM drive. So if you've got two gigs of hard drive storage, 128 megs of RAM, and a video card, and an Intel-based or AMD-based processor, you're good to go. It's currently in release candidate stage, and you can download and try it out on your machine if you'd like, but uh, they're, uh, they do have an open forum over at, uh, if you go to Linux Mint, if you go to linuxmint.com, I believe it is, and then they have a form link up there, and you can go to participate in their open form and discuss features you'd like to see in their uh, Fluxbox edition. And one of the things that jumped out at me immediately when I looked at the current version, or, or the current release candidate version of Linux Mint uh, Felicia Fluxbox, was the overall look and, and feel of, of elegance wasn't sacrificed at all with this release. Even though it's minimal, it's still one of the classiest experiences that I see on the Linux desktop today. That's huge because they didn't have to run some powerhouse GNOME window environment or KDE 4 to get this really elegant looking desktop Linux environment. And I think that's something that really should be appreciated is they're delivering a lot of look and a lot of um, refined experience in such a minimal package and this really is something that with a little bit of training you could deploy on older hardware for um, donated computers or older office computers where they just need some essential web services and things like that and you could really extend the life of those computers with something that you could put in front of somebody and they would ha they would look at it and say okay this is different but it's still something worth investing time in. Like sometimes you, you show something to somebody and it looks so different and not as polished that they won't even really consider working with it. They look at it, they do some sort of, you know, they, they evaluate the interface like people, by people, like how people will judge a book by its cover. They look at it, their first impression tells them this isn't worth my time and they'll shut down. And as an IT person who's trying to show people different technology all the time, I can attest that I see this happen all the time. If something has a little bit of polish, like I think Felicia Fluxbox does, I think when something has a little polish like this, it really extends how far users will invest into it, especially users who are not familiar or comfortable with this particular environment. So while some people will quickly sort of brush aside the importance of a little bit of polish on the desktop, I really actually think it's pretty key, especially when you're talking about a way you want to reinvest in older hardware, and the people that are going to be using that older hardware are typically not people that are power users. So the theme, the look, are actually really important. I always get dogged on when I talk about that in these reviews because people always tell me that's not the important part, but I so disagree with you. I really think the look is so important, and I'm really pleased to see that even in this minimal environment, they've been managed to pull it off. Now, of course, they've included a lot of really important software too. Things like Pigeon and Firefox and Remote Desktop and BitTorrent clients and chat, XChat clients and things like that. Things that you need to have on a desktop anyways, especially as things go more and more online and web-based, software, software as a service, as some people will call it, or cloud computing, uh, things like Firefox and, and having good mail clients and chat clients is extremely important. And when you're trying to, like I say, when you're trying to get a little more out of that old computer, trying to save a few bucks, it's great to be able to have all of these latest packages in this minimal environment. Um, they do include a live CD, which, uh, does have a few issues currently in the RC, but nothing major. Um, and they also can, you can also install it on your hard drive, and uh, you would just load from the live scene and then install from there. It's looking like a really great release so far. I'm really stoked to see the final product. Um, I, I, I think if they're pushing, if they're driving this at this, at this level, this, this has not been in development for very long as far as I can tell and they're already at this level, it's just going to say great things about the final product. Um, once, one of the nice things is, is because they realize that you're running in a minimal environment and you can run off the live CD, you can, you can select different levels of the desktop. You can say, you know, I'm on the baller rig, so all you can go ahead and use 300 megabytes of, uh, of RAM. Uh, or you can say, ah, you know, I'm rolling a little 19 
93 over here, so only use 256. Okay, who had that much memory? I'm, ro I'm rolling a little 1995 over here, so only use 256 megs of memory. Uh, or you can even, even go as low as uh, 192 megabytes of memory with uh, swap. And this is just for the live CD. You can actually use even less memory when you install it on the hard drive. Um, I think in 1993, I think I had 16 megs of memory, if I recall. So, I was... Maybe some of you had more memory than that back then, but uh, me, I was I was rolling the 16 megs, and I thought that was pretty awesome. My machine came with four, and then I popped open the case, and I upgraded that sucker to 16 megabytes of RAM. That was crazy. That was crazy. <laughs> um, and, oh, and 80, 80 megabyte hard drive? Are you kidding me? It was awesome. Uh, so anyways, I'll throw in some links in the uh, show notes for uh, Linux Mint Felicia Fluxbox Edition. It's, it's you know, it includes a lot of the great Mint utilities for like Mint, <clears throat> excuse me, like um, Mint Update and Mint Install and Mint Upload, all those Mint Nanny. Boy, I could, you just go through this. It's so impressive, all the software they include in this. Um, I'll, I'll link to all this stuff in the, in the side note, in the, in the uh, show notes, because it's, it's really impressive, and I, I think if you want, uh, um, what I'm going to be using this for personally, and I think maybe if you might want to do this too, is uh, I'll load this up in a VM because sometimes I want to, and I always recommend people do this. Actually, I get this from all, I get this question a lot, and one of the things I really like to recommend people do is go with one of the long-term support distributions out there. Ubuntu has one, um, Red Hat has one. You could always load like CentOS as your desktop. A lot of different people have these long-term uh, you know, patched for many, many years, fairly stable, static release cycles. Um, but the problem is, is you get the itch, right? I mean, I know I do, and I end up reinstalling. So what I'm going to start doing is when I want to play with something, I'm going to load it up in a virtual environment using VirtualBox or VMware or whatever. But uh, maybe I just want to play with a particular package. Like in my uh, circumstance, often it's Samba. I want to play with Samba. Well, do I need to load an entire heavy-duty distribution? No, I do not need to do that. And if I want just a, a minimal GUI on there for whatever reason, this uh, Linux Mint Felicia Fluxbox is looking like my ideal choice for that particular environment. I'll have a really nice uh, low-impact VM running with all of the latest packages because they're basing it off, of, uh, off of, a, uh, of a fresh version of Ubuntu with their own twists on there. It's I, it's it's really going to be a slam dunk. I don't know if I'm actually going to run this on any physical hardware. I don't really have old computers anymore. I've kind of, you know, disseminated them out amongst family members that needed old computers. But I think for virtual environments, for me, phew, Felicia Fluxbox, hello. <laughs> okay, well, so that's Felicia Fluxbox. Uh, it's pretty nice. I'll link to it in the show notes. So check it out if you want to download it and give it a run. And then head over to their forum. Just go to linuxmint.com and, and find their forum and give them feedback on it because they're trying to make a great product and I think they're I think they're on the right track. Um, but maybe you've got another minimal distribution. I know a lot of you out there like Puppy Linux and um, uh, Damn Small Linux. DSL is another popular one that I've heard a lot from a lot of you out there. But maybe there's another one that I haven't mentioned. If you'd like to uh, point me in the direction of one, hit me up on Twitter twitter.com slash chrislas or you can email me chris at jupiterbroadcasting.com uh, also should point out that we have different formats of these shows we have audio only and we have uh, downloadable h.264 we have og theora you can find all of those over at jupiterbroadcasting.com all right everybody thanks so much for watching this episode of an in-depth look and Keep it geeky. This episode of An In-Depth Look is sponsored by GoDaddy.com, the world's largest host and domain name registrar. If you're ready to make an impact online, GoDaddy.com has got you covered. Domain names as low as $1.99, plus world-class hosting with unlimited disk space and bandwidth. Do-it-yourself website builders, dedicated servers, and SSL certificates, and so much more. Plus, as an in-depth viewer, enter promo code LINUX20 at checkout and save an additional 20% off any one, two, or even three years website hosting plan. Some restrictions apply. See site for details. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com.